Really, I, I thought I had something in my face or something. <laughs> That's pretty amazing, though, that you can turn it off like that. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> a lot of work, though. It, uh, I do find it quite difficult, the unaxed thing. I mean, sitting in front of the mirror making weird shapes with your mouth for a long time. <laughs> Do you have someone on set with you that's helping you? Yeah, for the first half I did. Um, but he wasn't so present, which was nice. He just comes up and just says, watch this word. Oh. But yeah, I sort of picked it up by the end. Uh, but yeah, it was nice to see people surprised, because initially there was talk of making Jared English, which never made any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> any sense. Um, but hey, whatever they want. Are you looking forward to um, somebody on Twitter wrote you a poem? Did they? They wrote your poem. Can I hear it, please? Sure. It says, roses are red, violets are blue, everyone is team Ian, but I'm team Jared because I love you. <laughs> that's really nice. That, it's a slight break in the rhyme scheme. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that's lovely. Everyone is fucking team Ian. <laughs> and that was Leticia. Right. On tell, Twitter. Tell thank you to Leticia. I don't know how Twitter works. Thank I'll send her the video. Okay. Um... Yeah, uh, everyone has team in. Uh, but hopefully the movie changes that a little bit. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. You know. well, your character makes some very interesting first impressions when he meets her for both of the first times. What are those scenes like? Completely opposite. There is there is a relationship between yeah. lust and violence in this script that we might address, not around this table. <laughs> Maybe ask Stephanie. Have you introduced Stephanie yet? Mm -hmm. Ask her about it. But yeah, it was a kiss, then a headbutt, then a slap, then a kiss, then a bite, then a kiss, then a punch. So, hmm. And there was that line, kiss me like you want to get slapped. Oh, yeah, you got sl slapped a lot in the movie. All the time. <laughs> I know. Did you actually get hit at all, or was it fake? Uh, no, most of it's fake. I think Stephen, uh, Sasha got me once. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all It's bound to happen. <laughs> yeah. What was it like working with such a young actress? But yeah, she's so accomplished, and she seems like an old soul. She, uh, when I first met her in the audition, she was 17. And I'd met her before when she was 14. She sort of had the same quality then. She has a real emotional intelligence that sort of shines through her eyes. Um, and I think that's what all actors try to achieve. You know, this honesty, this truth coming out without doing anything. You look at it and you think, what is it you're doing that makes you so captivating and so truthful? And it's quite hard to put your finger on it. But I think she's a really instinctive actress. Uh, and I sort of, working with her, you feel you're learning a lot, and it makes it really, really easy. Um, yeah. What was it like having to kiss her and her parents are around? Is it awkward? Oh, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. There was the scene where we were in the bed in the trailer was really weird. Because mm. there was like a uh, linen cloth or something, you know, blowing in the wind. <laughs> and he was right there. The dad? I could sense him looking at the side of the <laughs> <laughs> Know, keep your hands where we can see him, that kind of thing. But no, he's such a great guy, Paul. Both Sasha's parents, and that's probably why she is as rounded and as decent as she is. Um, so, yeah, no exchanges. <laughs> you had to kiss her in that one scene right after Jake. Was that weird? You guys were. <laughs> it actually, it always makes for a boring story, but no, it wasn't because thankfully me and Jake are really good mates. Uh, Sasha's <laughs> also a good friend, so we were, there was a lot of laughing, joking on set. Um, so, no, there was no sense of competition <laughs> or, you know, uh, performance questions or anything like that. <laughs> Better kiss or any of that, yeah. We get asked that a lot. We get asked you that, get asked which that. is odd. You think they'd ask Sasha. We get asked it. Who's better kisser? Uh, and of course, you each say yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to do any preparation for that dance scene, or did you just guys go for it? We had a half an hour dance lesson um, about a month before we shot that scene, so of course we'd forgotten everything. <laughs> Um, so we threw it together, we had a dance coach there on set, but we threw it together, but it was fun, you know, we had actual music playing, we had 50s music, I think it was the Monkees playing, uh, mm -hmm. but there was a line of, you know, crew over there, but they were yelling, do it better, pick her up better, you know, keep doing it, keep doing it, so you got some so confused and chaotic and so much laughter that it sort of became organic, which was, which was nice. Reading the book for the first time, which character other than your own were you drawn to? Drawn to or wanted to wanted to play? Either. I quite I always thought playing Kyle would be quite fun because mm. he's such a fucking nutcase. Okay. <laughs> you know, you can, uh, there's so many options there of how to do it. But I think Boyd does it so well. Uh, he's got a real menacing presence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Kyle would be fun to play. But Jeb as well. Wouldn't Buxley couldn't play Jeb? <laughs> but, um, only William Hart, Hart can play Jeb. He is Jeb. Um, but that's a really nice.
nice character, uh, really accepting. He's got his eyes and his heart open to possibilities. Yeah. What do you do to stay in shape for your roles? Have you tried any new workouts lately or anything? No, my workout is very old fashioned. Not that I've done it in about a month, but um, <laughs> we had to go to the gym six times a week, uh, just lifting weights, um, squats, lots of those, uh, and eating five meals a day. In fact, I had to take pills that made me hungry all the time. So you just constantly be eating turkey, vegetables, sweet potato. Nothing nice, no pizza. <laughs> Nothing actually tasty, just matter, healthy matter. Did you work out with the trainer? Yeah. Who was the trainer? He was called Ryan Griffin. Ryan Griffin? Great, if you could give him a name shout out. Okay. That would be amazing. Uh, he, fuck, I can't remember the name. I'll find that out. Okay. But yeah, he really looked after me. Was it was that just for the role, or do you work out with him in general? No, I sort of once you when you work out with someone for four and a half months, you sort of learn. So I can now do it by myself. Yeah. Minus the pills that make you hungry, and I actually still have them. They're quite useful. <laughs> <laughs> they're quite seriously though. They're quite because on things like this, you actually don't really get an opportunity to eat much. So when you get back, if you want to get back into that, you take them for a while, so your body gets used to it again. Useful to have. Did you eat like three pizzas after you're done filming? I ate so much crap <laughs> after I was done. Just crisps. Uh, what do you call cr cr chips? Chips. 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 <laughs> Showered in chips. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really good. Now, any horror stories with those um, contacts? I didn't have to wear them. Oh, that's right. You didn't have to wear them. I did wear them for Red Riding Hood. Um, and it took me, I think, a week and a half before I could put them in without passing out. So you're kind of glad on this one you didn't have to worry about it? Someone's finger coming towards my eyeball. Oh, someone puts them in for you? Yeah, at the beginning. Because mm. I don't want to touch my own eye. No. <laughs> I don't want anyone else to touch it either, though. I'd rather someone skill, you know, I'd worry I'd stick it into my eyeball. <laughs> um, but I think my passing out is a really highly defensed evolutionary uh, <laughs> step. Something unpleasant is happening. I'm just going to nod off. And I'll wake up and it's been done. It's done. Easy. Everyone else has to suffer through it. Me, no. I'm more <laughs> Did you give the others advice? The same thing. This is how you handle it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Just pass out. Just pass out. No, you need to have that magic or you don't. Yeah. How do you feel about the comparisons that are made to the Twilight films? I accept it. Doesn't surprise me. Um, but I saw an article in the New York Times which said the title was, maybe it wasn't the New York Times, but it was some, some newspaper. And it said, uh, which of these 12 films is going to be the next Twilight? We all know all of these films, you know, Hunger Games, um, Beautiful Creatures, and a whole list of others. And you look through them and you think, okay, the only common denominator between these movies is that they have a young cast. That is it. They're not vampires, they're not any of this. Um, and I think what people are more interested when they say that, because the host isn't comparable to Twilight, it's, it's, it's a science fiction film, it's a story of human survival poses questions that aren't posed in Twilight. Yes, it has the romantic element, but so does Bridget Jones, if you know what I mean. Um, what people are more interested in, I think, is the phenomenon that was Twilight. Is the host going to blow up and have kids going crazy all around the world? And I don't think it is, uh, to the same extent at least. Um, you know, I heard a story about Robert Pattinson being chased through the streets of Paris by a group of horny French girls. <laughs> now, I can walk for two miles in that direction for anyone right so, they're not quite. What about when you're back home, though? Do you get Same thing. More? I ride the know? tube every day. It's easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. So that's how you know when you've hit that status, when you have the horny French girls chasing you? The horny French girls sound quite good. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. Go away. No, don't really. Go <laughs> have you heard any crazy rumors about yourself yet? No. No. Are there any? I haven't heard. The Twitter, you're getting Twitter poems. Twitter poems? That's yeah, nice. that's, that's a first step. <laughs> no, we haven't crazy rumors. I did meet someone at a book signing, uh, obviously a Twilight fan first and foremost, who had shaved, filed her own teeth down into fangs. Ooh, yay. Can you imagine anything more painful than filing your teeth down? It's kind of weird. She was sort of 40 plus. She's like, hi, mm -hmm. I'm a fan. <laughs> 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 But clearly, she was ever so slightly unbalanced. Um, oh, Jesus. boy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a life decision. That's a serious choice to make. Yeah. I love this book. Thus, I'm going to fire my teeth. Well, when this comes out, you'll probably start seeing some crazy people with contacts. Sort of painting their eyeballs. Sending you weird things. things. Yes, 
So far, so good. So, so far, so good. So, so far, so Just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, you have a famous dad. What was the best advice he gave you when you, when you told him you wanted to get into the business? Um, he gave me lots of different advice. Uh, when I was younger, and I, I wasn't sure he thought I was necessarily committed, committed to the idea, he said to me, listen, it's a really, don't look at us. Both my parents are actors. My mom was mainly stage, but successful. Um, she said, they said, we've been really lucky. Don't look at us and necessarily think it'll be the mm -hmm. same for you, because mm -hmm. you've grown up around this. You know, the majority of actors, unfortunately, are out of work. There are far more actors than there are jobs. They also said that if you're an actor, you will have good days and you will have bad days. You will have good reviews and bad reviews. Mm -hmm. You'll be riding high and you'll be riding low. Um, it's difficult to form relationships because you're away a lot of the time. Uh, all those things. But they said if you can accept that, get over that, then go ahead and do it. And then when I started doing it, they said to me, keep using those muscles as much as possible. So if you're doing a film, you know, finish the film, finish the press, and then if you have two months off, go home, get a couple of friends together, and do a one-act play by the pub in, in East London, which mm -hmm. I've done a couple of times, and it's great, and it's just as rewarding, and it keeps the, keeps the motor running, uh, ticking over. Yeah. So you don't really take downtime in between projects then? No, I do, but you get itchy feet yeah. really quickly. Unfortunately, I went, I went to drum school, so I had a lot of friends who were actors and I was sort of hungry to do stuff in the same way. Uh, so, yeah. so, just having people over for beers? And